pesticides in our produce, forever chemicals in our water, lead and arsenic in our baby food. Is it safe to even exist? Well, pediatricians are taking the lead on this. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, it's Dr. David. So it seems as if I'm doing a series of all these things that are hurting us and hurting our children. And I've done videos about forever chemicals and what the, what that does in the water. And we've certainly talked about the baby food situation. Now, every year, there is a large report put together by the Environmental Work Group that lists the amount of pesticides in all of the different types of produce that are out there. Now, it seems as if many people a, don't know that this problem exists in the first place. If they do, they don't necessarily know what to do about it. And of course, they, a lot of people can't afford because a lot of it has to do with eating organic food. And so people don't even know what to do. And so this is becoming a mess. We're exposed on a daily basis to it. And really, you know, thankfully, there are some stuff to do. But gosh, it just it just seems as if we're just doing so much more to ourselves. And, you know, I'm beginning. We've kind of joked about maybe we need to find a new planet. But gosh, it kind of does seem as if we're keep on screwing this one up. There may be a point of no return as to what we're being exposed to. So anyways, so going back over a decade ago, the American Academy of Pediatrics, card-carrying member, I am, um, made the following statement that I'm going to quote. Pesticide exposure during pregnancy may lead to an increased risk of birth defects, low birth weight, and fetal death. They noted exposure in childhood has been linked to attention and learning problems as well as cancer. All right. Now, this has been on for a decade out there. And again, I know that a lot of people who follow this channel who are co more conscious and mindful about what goes into our body knows about this. So if there is anybody that you know that may not be aware of this information, please share it with them. It could make a big difference in that in their life, in their family's lives. And of course, that's what we're all about in our conversation about health, education, and choice is letting people know what problems exist and how we can try to mitigate them. Okay, now... We know that fruits and vegetables are essential for a healthy diet, right? But these pesticides, this is some of the biggest areas where it can come from, um, where it can be found. Now, of course, these, these uh, produce high amounts of fiber, non sugar, uh, near no ad, non added sugar carbohydrates, bioflavonoids, antioxidants, such chock full of good stuff. And of course, we don't want people to stop eating these foods, but again, we can be more mindful and selective on what we're doing. Now, of course, people want to avoid this. Um, and so the Academy of Pediatrics is referring people to a report ca called the 2023, 20, uh, 2023 Shopper's Guide to Pesticides in Produce. OK, and they're recommending that all parents and caregivers check this out. OK, now this is something that is put to forth by a nonprofit independent group bot called the Environmental Working Group. OK, and every year they put out these lists. Um, now, what they what they did in this past year's report, they looked at forty six thousand different samples from forty six different um, um, fruits and vegetables in order to put this down. And this was actually something that was um, put together. The actual research was done by the U.S. Um, Department of Agriculture. OK, now. There's this rotating list that they put forth, and what the environmental group um, does is they put together what they call their dirty dozen, which are the fruits and vegetables that are highest in pesticides, and then there's the clean 15, which are the conventional non-organic fruit, um, fruits and vegetables that have the least amount of pesticides, and this can be a very invaluable list here. Now, um, so this past year, the, the, the report that's coming, that's just released now, one of the interesting things about it is that green beans... Um, and blueberries made the top, uh, made the dirty dozen list. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. But in terms of this, um, the, the, the dirty dozen list itself, and you can look it up. I put into the description here the direct link for the EWG. That's the Environmental Working Group and their food list. You can see the, the list right there. You can even expand it out to see the entire list, etc. cetera. Um, but the top three um, most highly pesticided, I may have made a word up there, pesticide-containing foods um, are strawberries, um, spinach and kale collard um, greens and mustard greens. Okay, again, foods that we would think that people would hopefully eat a lot more of. And what they found is there was over 210 different pesticides that were identified amongst the different foods. And some of the produce had over 100 different pesticides for that type of food. 
okay, um, including the ones that are on the top three. But also blueberries got that as well. Now, um, some of the, 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 the produce that was tested, some of the pesticides are pesticides that have been banned for a long time by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Yet it's still making it into our food supply. Of course, that's where regulation and oversight comes in. And, you know, sometimes those are good things to have in order to make sure that we're not being exposed and that, you know, but of course there needs to be money and funding to have, have all of the things going. But isn't our health? important just like we talked about forever chemicals and the baby food um heavy metals again this is super important now nearly 90 percent of the blueberries and green beans in the sample had concerning findings so they didn't just take like one blueberry and test it or one batch you know they they, they, they sampled it from all over the country nine out of ten had problems right and blueberries we know one of the most highest oxidant antioxidant rich um um bioflavonoid containing foods out there we consider some among the healthiest now, as far as the clean 15 for 2023, the top three foods, the ones that if they're non-organic that have the least amount of pesticides are avocados, sweet corn, and pineapple. Okay, so now here comes, of course, an important question. What can we do about it? Now, of course, in a perfect world, we would all eat organic all of the time. And of course, we know that that is not feasible. And of course, not everybody can afford it, nor may it be available. But, you know, using the Dirty Dozen Clean 15 list, at least when you can't afford to be all organic, or let's say you're going out to a restaurant that's not organic, at least using this list to kind of choose what you're going to be exposing a person to, that's important. Now, it, other things that we can do now, certainly peeling and, you know, washing well produce is important. Of course, not all produce like broccoli can be peeled, right? But also, just because you're taking it off of the surface, and that's really important because that's obviously where the pesticides when they're sprayed. But also, if it's within the roots of the of the plant, and it's in the water supply, the rain comes down, it washes off of the fruit onto the into the fields. Then, of course, that those pesticides can still be picked up into the in through the root system and washing this not going to help that and that's still why this dirty dozen clean 15 list is so important now um if you what what, what you want to do is you don't want to soak and you know you do want you don't want to soak these the fruits and vegetables you want to have running water over because it, if it's just sitting in a bunch of pesticides that you just rinse and you took it out so you know put in a colander rinse it through obviously if it's like with an apple or something you can hold in your hand bigger you know rinse it very well in front on the on the water um using a scrub brush for things that are appropriate as well um then of course the main thing is also wash the, the fruit and vegetables right before you're ready to prep. Don't wash them, put them in your um, refrigerator um, and let it sit like that. Then, um, of course, that's something that's not going to be as well. You want to just kind of wash it off. And, of course, any bacteria that kind of washes off there, too. I know that people will use re veggie wash and other types of um, types of detergents. The research that I'm seeing is showing that that really doesn't do that much more than just a proper rinsing, etc. So, hopefully you now know something that you didn't know before. And, again, please share this information. We want everybody to be healthy, no matter who we are. Have a great day.